Now, some of you may recognize this image. Uh, this is another image that I shared in the YouTube video, in the 10 minute short video. And this is one I took in Cambodia. And actually, this is one of my favorite images actually that I've, I've ever taken. Um, I took it just um, as the sun was setting over a reservoir in Cambodia. And actually, when I took it, my initial interest was just on the bird in the foreground. That's what really drew my attention. I could see that the light was really, really nice. And I saw this bird and I always like using silhouette. So I was trying to make this interesting silhouette picture of the bird. But then I noticed in the background, because I'm always trying to pay attention to what's happening around me, not just in the frame, like I mentioned before, but also around the frame. And I noticed this man on a boat in the distance off to my left. And I, I could see from the direction that he was traveling in that he was going to come into my frame. So I tried to frame the bird in the foreground and I just kind of kind of guessed where this boat might go. And luckily, the boat came into the frame just in that perfect position. And you can see that by using the tree on the left, and the this kind of pole on the right hand side in the background, I was able to create this really interesting image that had multiple points of interest. And I was quite lucky in getting, getting this image, but I, I anticipated it. I was aware of what was happening both within my frame and around it. And that is key to mastering the technique of multiple points of interest. You've got to be aware of other things that are happening within your frame. Now, I like to, on a technical note, I don't really talk about technical things very, mo very much, but on a technical note, I like to shoot on a 35 millimeter lens most of the time. I do use some other lenses, some zoom lenses, but my go-to kind of focal length is around 35 to 50. So for street photography, for travel photography, for photojournalism, that's kind of my go-to um, range. And so a lot, most of these pictures are taken with a wider lens, which allows me to get more inside. And it's especially useful for these um, images where you're working with multiple points of interest. Like in this image that I took in China, um, and you can see that the multiple points of interest here are the people's faces and also the Garfield face in the background. And so I'm in a busy shopping center here. I'm, I've got my camera up to my face and people are passing in front of me. And I'm kind of, I'm just waiting for those different elements to fall just in the right position and getting ready for that moment to take the picture. But of course, in this situation, here's a professional secret for you. I'm taking lots of pictures. So this is the image that I'm showing to you. But there were lots of other images where those elements didn't line up. And so this is one of the, the, the secrets, really, of the multiple points of interest technique is that you're going to be shooting a lot of images and those points, those elements within the frame don't always fall in that nice position. And this is another thing to mention with the multiple points of interest technique is that um, it's not necessarily a traditional um, compositional rule. There's not a set formula to it compared to something like the rule of thirds, where you have the, um, the lines really formally dictating where you should put something in the frame. The multiple points of interest technique doesn't follow a set rule. It's more about balance within the frame. It's more about balance of those elements across the frame so that they work in a way that looks pleasing when you look at the image. Now, I know that's not a definitive answer in terms of, or a definitive rule that you can go out and follow, um, but that's what makes it one of the advanced techniques that you can't actually I can't actually give you a definite rule. I put this thing here, that thing there, that thing there, and you'll get a great picture. It doesn't quite work like that, but you will find that you will discover the usefulness of multiple points of interest as you experiment with this approach, especially when you're 
maybe in crowds and you've got lots of different people and you've got the layers in your image where something's happening in the foreground, maybe something in the middle ground, and you're finding you've got different things coming into your frame that you can play with and try to make these more interesting compositions. Again, this is another one of my favorite images, which I included in the YouTube video. Uh, and you can see very clearly in this image how the multiple points of interest of the different people within in the frame, they're balanced across the frame, which gives it this strong composition. And I think for the multiple points of interest technique, it's, it's, it's really about that balance across the frame and how you can use those different elements, whether it's people or animals or other things within your frame to make them work better for you in that image to make a much more interesting photograph. So here we're looking at different examples of this technique where I think you, you should be starting to see how this technique is used in lots of different kind of situations. This is another image that I took uh, on the Tibetan plateau. And this one's quite nice because you have those four distinct points of interest across the uh, foreground on the ground there. And then you have one in the in the background as well that you can include. But again, you can see it's got this really nice balance, almost like, like a triangle shape to this composition. But again, like I mentioned, with the multiple points of interest, these points that they vary from photograph to photograph. But you can see once you get that balance, once you get that distinction between the different points and separation is quite important. If you look at this image that I took in India of these men um, digging out a riverbed. Again, this is going back to the drought story that I mentioned before. You can see in this frame, there's this clear distinction between uh, those five different men that appear in the photograph. I've circled the one in white because he was the one I was paying attention to. And then just again, in my peripheral vision, I was trying to look for the other people in the background, waiting for them to kind of just fall into those positions that were distinct from each other so I could make an interesting image. And again, this is another image from India where we've got different things within the frame, multiple points. My eyes are always drawn to the pig walking in the foreground that just literally just happened to walk across. I was initially taking a picture of the uh, lady filling up water cans. And I also noticed the, the man and the child in the doorway to the left there. And then this pig just walked along the road. And again, I saw it out the corner of my eye, got ready, moved my position, adjusted it slightly, and then took the image. And I managed to get this really nice multiple points of interest shot. And then this final image, this is kind of taking the multiple points of interest uh, technique to the extreme. This is an image I took in Beijing, in China, uh, during a football match, a soccer game. And you can see in this kind of image, you certainly don't have one point of interest. You certainly don't have two. And you've got multiple points of interest that take your eyes all over the frame. And this is obviously something that's quite a rare circumstance to be photographing. But uh, you can see that even having multiple points of interest to the extreme can sometimes make for an interesting image. So tips for using your multiple points of interest. Uh, pay attention to the whole frame. As I mentioned, you've got to think about how these different elements might fall into your frame and try to find that balance within your frame. Uh, like I said before, be aware of what's happening in your peripheral vision. Is anything coming into your frame that you might be able to use? Similar to what we were talking about with the two points of interest. It's even more important with the multiple points of interest techniques, technique. And lastly, give each element breathing room. I think from the examples that I showed you, you can see that it's really important to try to give each element, each subject within your frame, if you're using this technique, breathing room so that they kind of exist in the photograph on their own in different points. And that's really important for you if you want to try to use this technique and to make more interesting and powerful pictures. 
Okay, so let's go on to your comments and questions from this one. Again, uh, let's see, who do we have here tuning in live? Uh, we have Rivaldi from Indonesia. Hi, Rivaldi, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got Comedy Inside tuning in from Bangladesh, welcome. And we also have Vicente tuning in from Spain. So thank you very much to everybody who is tuning in live. Uh, and we've got Howard watching from Taiwan, which is not too far away from where I am now. Okay, um, let's go on to some of the questions. If there's any of you watching live uh, in the live stream who have questions, I've got a lot, please send them through. We've got lots of people who are letting us know where they are watching from, which is fantastic. If you have any questions about the techniques, uh, please do let me know. Again, I've got a few lined up here that I got on the original video, so I'm just going to cover them and give a shout out to those people who left those comments. So the first one is from Elki1317. Uh, they said, that doesn't convince me. Maybe for special images it might work with multiple subjects, but in general, most photos and the viewer can only handle two. Well, the reason I chose this comment is because, you know, not everybody always agrees with some of the uh, the tips that I share, and that's fine. I don't just want to pretend that they're all positive comments. Most are, um, but uh, your comment was, in, in general, most photos in the view can only handle two. Well, you know, I, I beg to differ, to be honest. I think, you know, if used correctly, I think the viewer can handle multiple points of interest. But like I said before, you've got to use multiple points of interest in the right way. Um, you don't want to just cram your photo with as many points of interest as, as possible, with no meaning, with no points or intention. I think if you do it with intention uh, and you do it well, using those techniques that we talked about before, about how you can use multiple points of interest, I think you can excuse me, I think you can make a, an image that holds your viewer's attention and is powerful. Um, I think I encourage you to go out and have a try. Maybe you'll find that you do like shooting with uh, multiple points of interest. Um, at Anta40 says, in most photography groups, there will always be a few old senior photographers who will underline the importance of a point of interest. I often use multiple points of interest to annoy them. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe using just one point of interest is a little bit more of a uh, older school technique. Uh, maybe multiple points of interest is uh, a little bit maybe newer. Um, maybe it's a little bit more of an advanced technique. Maybe some people don't know about using multiple points of interest. Um, but I thought that was quite a quite an interesting. Uh, a funny comment. Um, okay, I don't quite know how to pronounce this username at Piotr Granizewski, maybe from Poland, uh, 8544, so says these images exacerbate my ADHD. <laughs> okay, well, multiple point images uh, aren't for everybody. That's all I can say for that one. Uh, at Simon Payne, 7994 says, very good compositional ideas. The third, eye, third idea, multiple points of interest, is a bit tricky and can rather easily misfire. True. The scene becomes too congested and the viewer is left bewildered, wondering what he or she should be looking at. Most seasoned photographers recommend the opposite, keep things simple. On the other hand, there are quite a few old, very impressive, very busy photos around. Okay, again, yeah, that goes back to what we were talking about before and that you've got to be careful when you use multiple points of interest. Um, don't try to cram things into the photo. Use it with intention and try to use it well. And if you're not quite getting it, maybe take a step back, go back to two points of interest, uh, practice that a little bit more, and then come back to the multiple points of interest uh, technique. It's not easy. Even professional photographers um, require a lot of patience to pull off the multiple points of interest technique. It does take patience and practice. But if you if you do get it, uh, you can really make really fascinating pictures. 